Welcome to the Hold the Line podcast. Sean Foyt here, and I have an amazing guest today. What an honor. Congressman Tracy Mann, thank you. Thank you. Great seeing you, brother. Thanks for coming over. And we're here just for those of you that don't know, we are on Capitol Hill right now in the heart of D.C., and uh, this is our ministry kind of HQ here, and there's worship and prayer and revival and all kind of amazing things that are happening in this space. But today we get to host an incredible conversation. I want to start, first of all, talking about what happened in Kansas, Kingdom of the Capital. Yeah. We brought our whole crew to Topeka. And what, what, what did you think so about that? It was that? last spring. Yes. Um, I live about an hour and a half from there, so we okay. loaded up. I remember it was a Sunday afternoon. Yeah. Loaded up my wife and our four yeah. kids went to Topeka. First off, remember how the Lord totally moved in securing that space? Yes. So, so we were trying to have this and on the steps of the Capitol. Yeah. Yes. Should be able to do that. Had gotten some resistance. Yes. The Lord Actually, totally Kansas was in. one remember of this? the most... Difficult, which infuriated uh, me. Uh, a permit to secure, but yeah. but you came so through. So frankly, our governor is very difficult. But we, right. but it. I mean, the Lord. Remember that the Lord yeah. totally moved. Yes. Made a phone call to some state house members while they yeah. were all meeting at the same place, same time, and that all happened. But man, felt the spirit there. Yeah, it's a great worship service. Yes, call for renewal, revival. Yeah. You know, Kansas is the center of the country. Right. Um, kind of the beating heart of what, America. What would that? And, and what did that feel like? This is what I because. This year we did twenty. We did twenty-seven U.S. capitals and twenty-three. Yeah. Twenty-four. We're doing twenty-three more. Okay. We're finishing it. So twenty-seven, right. twenty-three, uh, twenty-three, and twenty-four. And I just, what did it feel like having that many people at your capital city? I mean, Topeka is not a big town. A right. lot of these capitals are kind of off the beaten path, but it's significant because it's it a was, governmental headquarters. If I was to say one word, Sean, I'd say encouraging. Wow. It just felt so encouraging. There was a warmth about that. One, thank you for doing that. I mean, to go (laughs) to 50 state capitals in two years, that didn't just happen. Yeah. A lot of effort. (laughs) It's thank you. But it matters, right? Yeah. And reclaiming uh, this territory. Yeah. Really impressed with the crowd that was there. A lot of young people. Right. I was probably most encouraged the number of young people that just have a real heart for the Lord right. that were there. Yeah. We were talking a lot of them. It was an amazing yeah. spirit-filled wow. event. So good. And, and, and to, yeah. see, to see thousands of people coming together to understand the significance of enthroning Jesus in the governmental upper center, to me, I think it was awesome. That's I remember right. specifically about Kansas, you know, it was like when we were setting up that day, it was a Sunday afternoon and I'm, you know, kind of a sleepy town. I'm like, I don't know if anyone's going to come. Like, yeah, you know, and then all of a sudden, like 30 minutes before it starts, and I, I think this every time yeah, you do yeah, a sure. capital yeah, yeah. event, yeah. I'm like, no one's going to come. No one's going to, you know, we're in Olympia, Washington. I'm like, no one's yeah. going to come. 7,000 people yeah. show up, you yeah. know. But to see thousands of people come and really have a heart for their state. Mm-hmm. I mean, we had the attorney general there. Yeah. We had, you know, members of the legislature yeah. there. We went, you took us up. We, we got to go in the Capitol and pray, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, what is the significance of Kansas? Obviously, your district that you represent is the actual epicenter yep. of America, which is significant. Why is it important, though, that we go after places like this? Because it's the exact center. You know, when you think about renewal matters everywhere. Right. I would argue this concept in the Bible, scriptures, you know, Jesus changes our heart. Right. And there's this concept of being changed from the inside out. Yeah which um, just so happens my district, the first district of Kansas, the western two-thirds of the state of Kansas, except for the Wichita area, but the exact geographic center of the United States of America is in my district. It's actually in this field, this little town, Lebanon, Kansas, 200 people. If you go to Lebanon, um, two miles outside of town, there's this little monument, little park. And that's the exact same. It'd be a great place to come and do a a prayer service. That would be awesome. So we'll go there sometimes and just pray for renewal, literally, you know, for right. the Lord to move from the inside out wow. and kind of reclaiming the exact center of the country. That's amazing. I think about Kansas, John, as kind of the pilot light of the nation. You know, the, yeah. the values that make America, America, I would argue things like faith, family, hard work, right. personal responsibility. We've got to keep those values alive right. and well everywhere. But right. especially if, if they if they go out in Kansas, right. the very center of our country, yeah. I would argue we're in big, big trouble. Right. But if you can keep the pile like going, you can add gas to it and it can right. grow and expand. So right. that, that's that's incumbent. Uh, and that's and, and the awesome. interesting thing, even in, in you know, red states, like I found in our journey of through the twenty seven capitals last you know, last year that some of those red states were the biggest battles. Yeah. Which kind of was shocking to me. But but then when I began to pray into it and realize, okay, 
there's actually warfare over this. I mean, some of the blue states, whatever, Christians are crazy and, you know. Yeah. But the red, it's it's almost like they don't, the, these powers and principalities, they, they, they come on these states to shift That's right. what God's done in the history and the legacy and the, I mean, do you feel that oh, at all? Without a doubt. With, yeah. You know, if, if evil can come upon Kansas right. and red states, of course that's where the front lines of the battle are. They're going to right. be everywhere, right? right? But I think at times it's really When it comes for life, visual. issues of that's life right. and issues of family and issues of, yeah, freedom. Freedom. Really, you know, the fact that you had to try so hard to get your permit yeah. to worship the Lord Jesus God Almighty. in Kansas. Yeah, Jesus <laughs> in Kansas. Right. That's a big, that's a big problem. Right. Um, and indicative of... You know this battle we're all in, and we right. got to keep on yeah. it and not not get, surrender an inch. So. so, so give us a little update. I mean, you're you, you love God. You have an amazing family. He's he's placed you here on Capitol Hill in this wild environment. Americans have seen over the last few months the chaos and the confusion and what's happening in the House and who's going to be speaking. You know, yep. you know, McCarthy gets taken down, and then we're not sure what's going to happen. And and then all of a sudden, you know, it's like. God has a perfect plan. That's right. Here comes Mike Johnson, who's a, you know. Someone that, without question, the Lord just elevated. Right. Totally. In that moment. I mean, yeah. there's, there's no doubt about it. Yeah. Gives, you, gives me goosebumps just thinking about it right now. Um, you know, Mike Johnson, um, very strong faith, humble, servant leader, right. cares about people, kind of just what we need right now. Yeah. Um, these are important times. You know, about right. a year ago, so last February, my wife's usually in, in Kansas, but she was in D.C. And overlap with you and yeah. Kate. Uh-huh. Remember, we went to the yeah. dome, the very top of yeah. the Capitol. Yeah, that was awesome. And uh, stood there and prayed over our right. nation. Yes, But yes. we just have got to acknowledge we're we are in a war, right. in a battle. Yeah. And uh, when we forget that, we you know that's not good. We got to acknowledge where we're at. Right. And uh, what what we need to do. Remember the sons of Issachar who understood the times, times and the seasons and yeah. knew what they should do. Right. Um, and that's where we are. So so when. What's the hope in this new season with Mike at the helm? Is there a sense of people rallying behind him? Is there a feeling that, is there any kind of optimism for what can be accomplished and then also leading into these elections? Yeah. And essentially you, you have to prove to America, hey, listen, we can get stuff done, vote us back in. Yep. And more people, yep. so it can be a, a bigger majority. Where are we, where do you what do you feel like? There absolutely is optimism. Don't forget what we're talking about right now is not what we were talking about just two short years ago. Right. When at that time, you know, our debt, you know, there's I think Franklin said a, a public debt is a public curse. You know, yeah. we're thirty three point five trillion dollars in debt. Two years ago, uh, we were having trillion dollar bills just getting jammed through the house on a very partisan right. basis, just racking up right. our debt, which right. is. I would contend is not what the Lord wants. Right. So we're, we're not seeing any of that now. We're able to go on offense or at least stop right. a lot of those bad things. Right. But it's a battle kind of through and through yeah. in these agencies and, and what we're seeing right now. And what do you feel, um, you know, what, what, are, what are some of the big agendas or the things that you, well, you're hoping to accomplish? Sure. I mean, to me, I, I think about threats to our country. We're in yeah. 2023. We'll right. be 2024, you know, here, here shortly. Um, our debt, China. Right. And we've drifted from our basic founding fundamental values, Sean. I mean, right. the, the, those to me are the three threats. And so what do we do? I think we make sure that um, we continue um, instilling our values, right. uh, which, are, which are American values. Things like right. we shouldn't have taxpayer funds go to abortion. Right. Th- th- this, is, yeah. this has been the law of the land yeah. forever. So it's, it's things like that. It's getting our debt under control. Securing the border is really right. important. Right. And those are all things that, that you're going to see play out here over the next yeah. few days, weeks, and months. And, and do you feel, what's your sense going into the elections in, in the fall? Do you feel like, uh, yeah, what, 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 what are you sensing? Yeah, you know, it, it's a ways out. Yeah. Um, I've learned in this world. A lot of world, stuff in, You know, <laughs> in, uh, I, remember, I remember October 2020. Yeah. Um, somebody called me and said, what do you think the election were three weeks out? And I said, remember, three weeks ago, the president of the United States had not gotten COVID yet and then recovered. Amy Comey Barrett, no one had heard of. Right, like, like right, 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 so, right, totally. So the, the election is, in some ways, is five political elections away. That right. said, I think it's very clear that Americans are concerned about this country. Right. They're concerned about the direction we're going. They're concerned right. about our wide open southern border. Right. They're concerned about the crime they see um, in our urban areas. A lot of it from these woke, lawless policies. Right. These are all things that, that people see, care about, yeah. and I think it bodes well for this next election. Yeah. And so 
just to give you a, a, a picture why I feel encouraged. So last night we were here in this same space. This house was full. I don't know, 50, 60. It was so many people crammed in here. You know, these are staffers. These are aides. These are people that work on the Hill. All different departments, Senate, House, DOJ, DOD, all these things, Commerce, Department of Commerce. But we're in here last night and we're worshiping and we're praying and I could feel like God touching. Mm. You know, this this room, this little space, you know, we call it Ilah, which is where David picked up his yeah. smooth stones yeah. to slay the giant. So a small place that slays big giants, that's the dream, right? Mm. Mm. So this worship and prayer and this revival, but it was it was grassroots. Yeah. Like it wasn't, and I love it. I love Mike Johnson praying. I love all these guys. But I saw a move of God happening on the grassroots level. Yeah. And I believe that that's going to just increase yeah. in, in the season to come. And I mean, what if God flips the script on the enemy by setting the hearts of these staffers and these aides and these people on fire? How do you think that would All change? All matters greatly. Aslan's on the move. Yes. Right? Like that's the Jesus yeah. is on the move. Yeah. Um, I'd say get out of the way because it's coming, right? Yeah. I love the name. So I, I've, I've been to that valley. Yes. And he picked up some rocks. Yes. And I have, yes. a, you know, a few blocks from here, I have a, in my office a, a rock from, a you know, from yeah, yeah from Elon, yeah. which is which. Is, I walked in here today just, and felt a great spirit here. Yeah. Um, so the Lord's moving. I think we got to yeah. remember, politics and elections are downstream from culture. Right. Yeah. They absolutely matter. I want to bust my tail to make sure that we get it right this election, and also. We've got to be praying for renewal and a transformation right. of hearts from the inside out of this country yeah. as well. And, and with what like happened last night, yeah. when you were seeing that happening here in Washington, D.C., right. it's, it's encouraging. It is. It is. And I mean, pe I think people have to understand, like, even on, like, like we're the only, like, row house on this street that puts an American flag up. Huh. Like, this is how insane it is in D.C. And, and they keep ripping it down. An American flag in D.C. So, like... A couple like, blocks from the capital of the United States of America. A couple blocks from the capital of the United States in D.C. So, so not only that, but then to have that kind of energy and prayer and, and, and spirit of revival, like God really is moving. And I, yeah. I, my, I know I'm encouraged, you know, having gone into the rotunda with you a few times, worshiping, mm -hmm. uh, praying, like these things matter. Like, yeah. like we, we're taking ground, we're changing. Like you said, you've got to change the culture. Yeah. Like the culture, and I, and I feel like God's doing that. I feel like even in 24, some of my encouragement, and this is why we're going to these capital cities, is because we can talk all day and we want all day about blue or red or these issues or different things, but if God touches our hearts, yep. like if Americans get their hearts on fire for Jesus, they're automatically going to line up with kingdom values. That's right, that's right. And that that's part of the issue, I feel like, is churches aren't, preaching that like we've yeah. drifted so far we have, yep slow steady drift right and if you know if you if, when you're drifting if you're off one percent and i walk from here to the corner of that room it doesn't matter if i'm off one percent and i go from here to count to orange county right. right i end up in arizona right right totally. so over time this slow right. steady drift it's what yeah. the evil one does and then you wake up and realize we are way off we got to get back home right back yeah the country how do we get back prayer Prayer, being faithful, yeah. and, and it's, it's praying to change us. Yeah. Right? Asking the Lord to move, but also when we pray, it should right. change us. And then yeah. when we pray, we should listen and ask the Lord what He wants us to do. Yeah. And then it's, the, I'd say, prayer and obedience. Yeah. Worship. What, what, big what, part do, you, of that. what do you feel? Um, you know, we were just talking before we started this. You know, we have, you have four kids, I have four kids, they're almost yep. the same ages. What. When you look at them and you look at the future of America, like, and, and I've had this feeling as a dad sometimes, right? Because yeah. I'm extremely motivated. I think every dad is. They want their kids to, you know, we want our, 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 our floor to be, we want our ceiling to be their floor. Well said. Yeah. Right? We want them to go higher and better and farther and accomplish more and do stuff for the kingdom of God. Where, what is your prayer, and what are you here on the hill working? What, what is your prayer for the next generation as you look at them? Yeah, that they would know and experience the Lord, and they would live accordingly. Yeah, I mean, that, that that would be the prayer. Um, we got to remember, you know, America. I really believe that God ordained this country to be what it is—the bastion of freedom for the world. Right. We forget, and this is change. You know, Declaration of Independence, Jefferson writes a preamble. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they're endowed by their Creator. Right. With certain inalienable rights. First time in history, somebody stood up and said, look, our rights don't flow down from us from a king. Right. No, no. 
our rights are, are, are yeah. innate in us because they come from God. Yeah. This is not a top down. This is a bottom up. Right. That thought changed the course of human history. Yeah. Now, as we drift from that and you see government growing, in essence, Sean, as I see it, there's an inverse relationship between the size of government and our freedom. If you grow government, you're going to shrink freedom. Right. If you shrink government, you'll grow freedom. Right. So you've got to stand against the growth of government so that we can yeah. be free, which is what all people long to be in their heart of hearts. That's so, that's so good, and it's so true. What, lastly, one of the questions I wanted to ask, and, and I, love, I love your pen right here. Yep. Um, you know, we've been hosting these nights of worship for Israel, obviously. I mean, and, and these, these have been amazing. We've had them across yep. America, you know. Jews, Arabs, Christians, it, there's a profound sense of unity among praying for God to move in that nation right now in the midst of yeah. war. Where are you on that issue? How do you feel like we can pray, we can get engaged? Give us, give yeah, us your so thoughts. You, so I've been to Southern Israel okay. um, to mm-hmm. some of these kibbutzes who were raided and taken over, right? I think, understand what a group of humans did to another group of humans. It's insane. Evil. Yeah, demonic. I mean, you got to right. call it yeah. for what yeah. it is, yeah. and the antidote is to pray against that. We've got to stand with Israel, right, um, and make sure there's no daylight. You know, this is God's chosen people, this chosen land. I would argue, Sean, that one of the reasons that we've been blessed as a nation yeah. is because we have had Israel's back, yeah, and we've got to continue to communicate to the world that yeah. we have the United States of America has Israel's back. Right. Dangerous and concerning to me when I see members of Congress that. Don't agree or believe in that because right. that is completely antithetical to I think what the Lord wants and certainly what our yeah. American values are. Well, I mean, there's a track record. I think you can you can look at whether it's Britain or whether it's us, and and there's a history of when we have backed Israel and we have backed you know the promise in Genesis. Yeah. You yeah. know, bless those that bless you, curse those that curse. Yes. You know, when we have we, we when we've not backed them, we've suffered. Right. When, when Britain's not back then, when, when we have had their back, there's been a blessing of God. I mean, to me, it's undeniable. Do you yeah. feel like people just don't get that correlation? Yeah, it's blindness, right? Yeah. Like it, it's just maybe deceived, but you're right. It's undeniable. There's a right. cause and effect <clears throat> relation. By the way, we should be supporting Israel, though, not because we will be blessed, but because it's the right thing to do. Right. And I know I, I yeah. want to be really clear about that. Yeah. But it's amazing, you know, <clears throat> God, I think we got to re- remember what Israel is. You know, Abraham in faith, came to the promised land, you know, came to Israel, did not have any kids till he was very old. Right. Very end of his life, God blessed him with a child, you know, yeah. Isaac, who then had Jacob, and then all of Jacob's descendants had to, you know, it's just, right. and God said, when Abraham had no kids, as an old man, I'm going to make your descendants Great. numerous as the yeah. sand on the sea. Right. right? Yeah. And here we see it. Yeah. We forget that that's all. Right. It's amazing. Yeah. This is, and the prophecies about them gone. coming back yeah. to the land, the prophecies about them you know, I mean, and it's happened in our lifetime. And one of the yeah. things I love, the, there's this prophecy in Amos 9-11, which is reiterated in Acts 15, that talks about, you know, the restoration of the tabernacle of David, yeah. which is worship and prayer unto the rest of humanity may seek the Lord, which is the great missions movement. And then Israel will be planted in its land never again to be uprooted. So you have uh-huh. these three promises, uh-huh. right? That's good. And the first generation in the history of humanity that's lived in the confluence of these three is us right now. It, wow. Greatest prayer movement, greatest missions movement we've ever seen, and Israel's actually back in its physical land. So these, these, these are yeah. incredibly prophetic times yep. that we live in. Yep. And I think that what's, what my heart is, and, and this is why I love so much talking to you, is people get in this propagandized uh, media addiction. They get scrolling, 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 scrolling. They get the news media, they get overwhelmed, they get anxious, they get whatever. They don't realize, hold on a sec, we're living in a prophetic time. Yeah. And every year yeah. people say, 20, you know, 2024 is the most important election of our lifetime. Ah, and they try to, but, but we are actually living in days of prophecy, like we're living them out. Yeah. You know, what we see happening with Israel, what we see happening uh, around the world, wars and rumors of wars and in the midst of it all, mm-hmm. we can't lose the fire. That's right. That's well said. You know, and so going back to my question about the kids. Yeah. I look at my kids and I think, the other day I was watching them playing and I'm like, God, I don't know how they're going to survive hmm. in this world. Hmm. I, I grew up in the 80s and 90s. We didn't deal with all this gender yeah. craziness, the sexualization of kids. They, they weren't hit all the time with all these narratives on TikTok and all this stuff. 
Man, the Lord spoke to me and said, I have created them for such a time as this. Mm. Like they have what mm. they need. What is your mm. encouragement to other parents out yeah, there right I think, now? Fear not. Yeah. You know, the number one thing Love Jesus that. said, don't Love be that. afraid. Love that. Don't be afraid. These are serious times, but these aren't yeah. fearful times. Right. We know how this thing ends. Right. Sean, right. We do. So don't be afraid. And I just think to realize, you know, generations, 20 years, every four generations, there's a big upheaval. You know, we're in the, right. Right, 80 years ago, World War II, 80 years before that, Civil War, 80 years before that, Revolutionary War. So, so these, these are very turbulent times that we are in. Wow. Um, that's okay. Let's just make sure that we come out, that we do, that we pray for renewal while we're in the middle of them. Right. We will come out the other side. I think our brightest days are yet to come yeah. as we depend on the Lord. Um, and don't be afraid. Pray, be faithful, don't be afraid. I love that. Yeah. Hey, what do you think about sending us out with a prayer like that? I love that. Yeah. I love Lord, that. We love you. Thanks for this time together. We know that you are always in us and with us. Help for us to be conscious of that. Um, pray for renewal, uh, revival throughout our nation, um, every state, every community, throughout our land. We pray for Israel, um, that, that you would provide encouragement, that your spirit would sweep there as well, and fill us all more and more with your Holy Spirit. And help for us to not be afraid. In the name of Jesus. Thanks for Sean, his ministry, all the things that he's doing. Um, his heart for worship. Pray that that would continue and that you would um, revive um, our land. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Love it, man. Thank you.